I'm Dave Walter. I served in the United States Air Force from 1994 to 1998, and I was an air crew dispatcher and scheduler. I grew up in the Boston area, and I never considered my family a military family or anything. I did the traditional thing, going to college. However, I was not mature enough to stay in college, and I decided after a long night out, I got back to the house when the TV programming used to end. I know that was a long time ago, but they would have the flag and, you know, F-16s flying, and I was like, I'm going to go in the Air Force tomorrow morning. And I did. I needed to make a change. I wasn't the best version of myself at that time, and I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join the Air Force and, uh, and do something better with my life. So um, I joined April 12th, 1994. And uh, it was a huge like change. Growing up in the Boston area and then be doing basic training in Texas and San Antonio was like a different country. Went through, I did that, I got stationed back in San Antonio at Randolph, which is on the other side of the city from Lackland where basic training was. And I was stationed in the 563rd Flying Training Squadron, which is a squadron that trains um, navigators to fly huge jets, so like KC-135, um, C-5, you know, those kind of ones. And I bounced around to a couple of different squadrons and did their scheduling and dispatch. Um, ended up after a year or so going to the flight level. So um, I was in the flight records um, room, basically. We took care of everybody's flight record folders on the base. Um, one of the really cool things is Randolph, the astronauts were attached to our base and our flight records. So I got to meet a couple of the astronauts and got some mission patches and stuff like that. So that was really fun and interesting and putting space shuttle time is like way different than regular. Um, so that was kind of fun. Uh, I know we don't have the shuttle anymore, but it was really cool to be a part of, you know, that little bit. And then I was eligible for overseas. My supervisor was like, Emma Walter, you're eligible for overseas. Here's your sheet. So when you're in the Air Force, at least, and I think it's probably the same for other services, they give you a sheet. We call it a dream sheet because you're dreaming if you think you're going to get anything on there. So um, how I got to Texas, I put all East Coast bases, and then I put Nellis because it's by Vegas, and heck, I was 19. Why not? So they sent me to San Antonio. So I figured this time I wouldn't make that mistake. I would put all overseas bases in the same area. So I chose... Um, a bunch of bases in Europe, like 10 bases in Europe. And a few weeks later, I got my orders and I'm all excited. I'm like, oh man, all right, I got my orders, yay. Then I go up to my supervisor and I was like, hey, uh, what's this APOAP, um, uh, OSAN ROK, what is that? And they were like, oh, that's OSAN Air Base, South Korea. I was like, isn't that Asia? They were like, yeah. I was like, okay, so my sheet is all Europe. You guys missed the entire continent this time. I don't even know. But it was a great assignment. It's a place I never would have gone by myself um, as a civilian or anything, but I was so happy to go there. Amazing culture. When you're overseas and you're completely out of your environment, you know, and in the military, um, you form bonds really quick. Just being in the military, you form bonds really quick because you know everybody around you already made the same decision to lay down their life if they had to, um, you know, for our country. So. That's the base for everybody, so you know instantly, and not everybody proves to be trustworthy in those kind of things, right? There's good and bad with everybody. But for the most part, um, everybody that, that I met, whether it was Air Force or any other branch of service, I knew I could trust them immediately with whatever I needed um, and, you know, and anything because we were all in the same boat. You know, We were all going the same way, um, doing the same thing. And um, one of the most, actually one of the most powerful experiences I had was over South Korea. And um, it was 4th of July, <clears throat> growing up in the Boston area, 4th of July is huge. There's nowhere better in the world, probably, uh, nope, can't think of anywhere better than to celebrate 4th of July in the Boston area. So it's my favorite holiday, you know, my favorite non-religious holiday. And um, so we're at this bar in, in Korea and um, there's a cover band just playing some stuff and it's packed. There's tons of us in there, all, you know, all different branches. And they started singing Lee Greenwood's uh, Proud to be an American. And um, it was crazy. Everybody in the whole place, we all like locked arms. And uh, it was like one of the most, even though it was in a foreign country, one of the most like patriotic and powerful things. It was just, it was awesome, you know? And, and it was funny, the Koreans that we knew that owned the bar and, and the servers, they were like, wow. You know, they were just really impressed that we could be over there helping them with their defense needs and stuff. 
and um, you know, on such on such a day, it was just, it was amazing. You know, um, yeah, I'll never forget that. If I live to be like a million, I'll never forget that day.